What I'm going to show you right now is how to use Salsa J and the light curve plotter from the LCOGT.net website to look at an extrasolar planet transit. What we've got is um, you will have downloaded one of the sample data sets. What I'm going to show you right now is the WASP2 sample data set. And um, I'm just going to take you through the steps that you need to be able to see a light curve from um, that star as a planet goes in front of the star and um, blocks some of the light. So the first step is to open one of our files. I'm going to go to File, Open, I get this window, and we've got all these files here. The first one is a finder chart which I'll open in a minute. And as you can see, all of these files have very long numbery names, um, but each one has some kind of unique number in it. So what I'm going to do, you can do this however you want, but I'm going to take the unique numbers from each of these and use that in my spreadsheet to identify which image I'm looking at. So I've got image identifier here, and this first image, I'm going to open up and resize. You won't have to do this. Okay, so before I start, I'm just going to put in, I'm working with image 101 here. Okay, then I'm going to go back to Salsa J. And this is image 101. And first, I need to change the brightness so that we can see it. There we go. Now, before we can start, we don't know which star in the frame is the one with the planet, so we need to go back over. To, I'm looking in my file browser here to that folder that the WASP2 data was in, and here's the finder chart. So let me open that up. We can have a look at it here beside the image we're using. And you can kind of see there's a pattern bright star, bright star, bright star, bright star. There's the same pattern here with kind of the same angles, and that's pretty much what you're going to have to use to figure out which star it is. And this says transit target here. So this is the star that has the planet going around it that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, and now we can get started on our photometry. Um, as you'll have seen in some of the beginning photometry screencasts, I need to go up here to photometry settings. Let's see if I can find that again. Analyze photometry settings. Here it is. Okay, now for this, I'm going to use a radius of 7 for the star and 15 for the sky. Okay, I'll get that out of the way, and I'm going to enter those in the spreadsheet just so that if I ever come back to this, I can remember what I used. It would be handy if you ever have to redo your work. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, because we're looking at these images over time, is we need to know what time this image was taken. So I'm going to go to Image, Show Info, we get this window, and as you can see there's lots of information, but we're look what we're looking for is UT start here. So I've got 6.57.38.559, so I'm going to move this off just so I can see it while I type in here. That start time was 6. 5738.559. Okay. And now the next thing we need to do is find out what amount of light was coming from there. So let me click off. I'm on the magnification tool. And now I can just go. We've set the everything up. I can just go to photometry. And I've got this box here. I've already been doing this, which is why there are some numbers in here. But I'll show you again. So I'll click on here on the star, and as you can see an entry pops up for what I just clicked. And the intensity is 875,073.75, so I have to move this out of the way so I can see to type. But I'll just type that in here, 875073.75. Okay, I've got that. And now I need to go back and look at this, and I'm going to choose a comparison star. I'm going to use this one. You can choose any of the brighter stars. You might want to choose a few, just in case one of them turns out to be variable or something. You could um, then just figure out which one works the best for you, but 
I know from doing this before that this one works well. So I'm going to click on that and I get a photometry result for that, 538,929. So I'm going to enter that in the comparison star. And so here we go, 5, 3, oops, here we go, 5, 3, 8, 9, 2, 9, one six. Okay. And then the spreadsheet divides the target intensity by the comparison intensity. And what this does for us is um, if over the course of the evening there were variations in the atmosphere, um, both of these stars will have varied by the same amount. So this takes out any error or dimming or brightening that we might see in this star that's not actually due to anything happening with this star. Okay, so we've got those values in and we can see a value popping up on our graph here. So what we can do is just go ahead and um, what you would do is go to File, Open, and open up your next image. Let's say, okay, and again I have to resize. So you can see it, here it is. To change the contrast. And again, you would just go through and do the photometry. Everything should still be set up for you. You're already doing photometry, so you would click here and get a new value for that and enter it in your spreadsheet and then click on your comparison star again and get another value. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you right now is once you've done all that, you should get spreadsheet that looks like this. It's all kind of filled in. It's all I filled in all of them and this is the order they came in and as you can see those FITS files were not in chronological order. I did them in the order they appeared in the folder which was not chronological order but I just put them in that way. And sometimes spreadsheets when they graph can seem to be able to organize that for you. Mine didn't and I've got this disorganized looking graph because the times are not in order. So what I'm going to show you is how to put them in order. So I'm going to grab all the data that's relevant to me and then I'm going to go to data sort and I want it to sort by column C here because I want it to sort by time. Okay and we'll say okay and now you can see it starts with the earliest time and goes through and ends with the latest time and it's sorted everything else. You can s see by the image identifiers that it's all in order now. And then if we go down here we've got a great looking light curve where we can see this is before the planet started to go in front of the star and then here it goes in front of the star blocking some of the light and then it's moved out of the way and the star brightens again. So what I've shown you how to do is to use Salsa J and a spreadsheet to look at the changes in light from a star as a planet passes in front of it.